far as the bow goes, it's just very hard. It's one of those things. It's so funny because it's like the thing you have to learn on day one, and then in your 15th year, your 20th year, you will still be, you know, experimenting and working on all these little nuances in your bow hold that will open up different aspects of your plane. So please don't, you know, feel frustrated um, if it's not feeling comfortable immediately. So just to review, I put my first finger on this part right here between these two knuckles, the skin here. That goes on what we call the leather of the bow, okay? I have a rubber piece, a rubber guard over the leather, but there's leather right there. That sits there. Two, second finger, I put on the metal of the ferrule right here. And not, not like draped way down over it and not in, in the space between the, the frog here. It's just like the tip of the finger is on the metal, okay? Three and four, in my opinion, depending on your hand, you can just drop them down anywhere. They don't have to fit a specific spot, okay? And we'll talk about the thumb in a second. The thing to worry about with your bow hand is, I mean, if you, if you just take your hand and look at it, you just kind of relax it and, you know, hold it out. You, that's kind of a good general idea for how you want your spacing with your fingers because you want a relaxed bow hold. You know, if I said hold your hand out in a relaxed way, you probably wouldn't do this. <laughs> it looks kind of crazy. But, you know, we'll take the bow and be like, okay, we need a nice flexible bow hold. And then we do something like this because for right now it feels powerful, I guess, or whatever it feels. It feels balanced or something. But that, you know, that causes a lot of tension to have a big space between one and two. Or if you do decide to put your pinky on top of the stick, which is totally acceptable to do, if you do that, if you get to a plane point where suddenly it's just now like a kickstand on a bicycle and this is sort of locked out straight, that, that's going to cause tension too. And it's also going to prohibit you from being able to have you know, kind of a flexible bow grip, okay? So one on the leather, two on the metal, three and four drape. As for the thumb, we've got the skin of the, of the thumbnail on the inside and the nail, that kind of corner, meets the corner of where the frog and the stick, that little space where they meet. So it's kind of corner into corner, okay? The way I, you know, I've told, I've talked about it in my videos, you've all seen, where you kind of rest your arm down and you can, you know, kind of get your fingers in the right spot. And then if you just apply the thumb, it will kind of naturally, for most people, it's just going to naturally meet that corner of the bow and the frog, the stick and the frog, with a bent thumb, okay? And when I mean bent, it's not necessarily, you know, wildly bent. And it can be somewhat straight, but you want flexibility of the thumb. That's the biggest thing, okay? The other thing I'd worry about or think about is maybe not allowing the thumb to kind of creep and crawl and eventually start sneaking <laughs> through this little like u-shape here where the frog is right above the ferrule the metal part you don't want the thumb kind of sneaking through there um, in terms of the orientation of the thumb and the fingers what i would focus on is if you think of this part of your middle finger, the crease of this knuckle right here, okay? If you think of a dot of ink right there in the center of that crease, and then you think of a dot of ink right on the tip of your thumb, okay? Those two dots are going to meet together, okay? And not strictly, but that's, that's kind of the orientation so, so if I do that with my, uh, with my hand, I'm gonna have just kind of a naturally bent thumb to, to come meet that spot on my middle finger, okay? But it's, I'm, I'm just meeting it there, it's not rigid, it's not locked bent and it's not locked straight. If you lock the thumb either straight or bent, both are gonna be a problem, okay? So 
leather, metal, drape, add the thumb, and then I can kind of, while I'm holding the bow, I can kind of think about the thumb and the middle finger. What I'm not saying to do is to press the thumb into the bow, okay? So definitely you don't want to think, okay, now I just got to get through this wood and I can get to that finger again, okay? So that's not, that's not the idea here, okay? So that's, that's the bow grip we've done. I've showed you in the videos this bow exercise, so I'm not going to go through it again. But what I find kind of the biggest thing is I think people have a concept of like, it's so frustrating because I know I was there where, you know, I know you say to relax, but I can't relax. How do I make myself relax? Okay. What I want you to do is to think about if you're painting a wall, you know, you think of the bow as a paintbrush. It's a great analogy. And you need to take your arm motion and then you're going to hold the brush and then the paint's on the bristles and you need the paint on the wall. And what I'm saying is when we squeeze with the thumb, in a way, it's almost like squeezing the handle extra, thinking you'll get more paint onto the wall. So you're just squeezing the tool, but you're not transferring any of that into the wall. Okay. So that, that's what I'm saying is you, you want to eventually think of kind of a relaxed grip that you're not, not so relaxed. It drops out of your hand, but, but kind of a relaxed grip and then think of a way of sinking arm weight into the string without squeezing the stick to do so. Okay. So I recently had a YouTube video out where I was talking about rolling an orange on a countertop and how, you know, if you, if you roll an orange to make it juicier, you don't squeeze the actual orange itself. You're just pushing your arm weight into the orange and the orange basically into the countertop. So you're like transferring your energy through the orange. Same here. You're going to have arm weight. You, and that's why we wiggle the string at the beginning. You have your arm weight and that's your chance to kind of tell your fingers to stand down, you know, and then you really think, okay, like I'm thinking with my elbow about moving the string back and forth. So I want the whole arm involved. Okay. And then when you pull the bow, I, one image you can kind of think of is if you had your arm here and you're either painting, this is obviously a very weird angle, but it's plain cello. That's what we do. You, you know, say you were painting this way, you're painting onto a, a surface like this, or you can even think of like petting, maybe like a horse or a dog, not a small animal. So like a big animal and you're just gently petting. Okay. So, so as your hand moves away, you're going to kind of sink into that dog's fur and his back. Just like, good boy, you know, like that. Okay. So it's kind of that feeling. All right. So that's a little bit on the bow hand. Um, I, yeah, just what I'm seeing from my students and what I see, you know, on YouTube and stuff is just basically this, this tendency, which I also had to eventually have the finger kind of going out on its own because you have this idea of like, I push down with the first finger. So that's why if you can really focus on the wiggling and having the weight of the arm transferred and not one finger in general, the first finger is the kind of the most important finger for transferring weight, but it doesn't, it's how you transfer the weight through that first finger, but from the arm. Okay. The other thing, like I said, the kind of uh, kickstand pinky is a problem. And then I've had people uh, writing in talking about how as they play, their hand is just like magically creeping up the stick, like this kind of recalcitrant little spider who's just like, I'm out of here. Okay. So what that is, is that's the thumb and the fingers kind of squeezing too much. Okay. And then, so you're basically squeezing and there's like nowhere for it to go. So it just, it's just pressuring. It's like pure pressure. There's like one bad egg in this group of kids and he's like, come on, come on, it'll be fun. And then, so it kind of, you're like forcing the rest of your hand up the stick 
because something is pushing, but there's like nowhere to go. Okay, so it just sort of, it's like forcing it up the stick. So the more you can think about sinking onto the string and transferring weight throughout the bow stroke and on the way back, even with, you know, when we talk about the pronation on the, on the uh, up bow, you know, by this point, I can stay pronated and continue riding in without really much use of my thumb. So you're just trying to figure out how can I use my fingers and thumb to achieve the, you know, to get the paint on the wall to continue the analogy without over squeezing the paintbrush. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, a large degree of it is experimentation and as adult learners, I want to give you my official permission to not worry about experimenting. I have this to this day. I struggle with this where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and if I, I'm gonna experiment with like how I'm holding myself or I'm gonna experiment with like, you know, making certain colors on the cello. And if it doesn't happen in that session, it's like I've wasted my time, which is so silly. And I can tell you that, but I even have those thoughts, okay? So it, to try to problem solve on your own, you know, kind of like you're being your own teacher, is a really great thing to do. Even if you're not sure what the answer is, I mean, if you were sure of it, you would just do it, right? But just allowing yourself to experiment and think about it critically, but not criticize yourself during the process. That's, I think, what, those, what kids tend to do, just not without even thinking about it. You know, they're just like, ah, oh, this isn't comfortable. And then they just kind of change things and then voila, they're suddenly something clicked. And, you know, that's why I think kids, if you ask them point blank, it's a, maybe a lot of them, it's hard for them to explain how they do what they do, even if they're a great player, because it's just natural. Part of that is like us tapping into our bodies and our minds and just thinking, okay, what's the natural way I need? I need this string, you know, I need some friction here and I need to pull a beautiful bow sound. What, what can I do? You know, how can I, how can I transfer that weight beautifully